waka 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 what's up and welcome back to the channel for yet another fc finch review and yes it is eagle moss day kind of spreading out the eagle moss as uh, we're waiting on some new product and uh i'm actually kind of running down on the uh back stock but uh hey you know we went through over uh probably what 60 almost 70 models this year uh so that is amazing in and of itself so i'm super happy for that thank you so much for sticking with me and that being said today we're going to get a look at a klingon ship we're going to get a look at the IKS Negvar, which is issue number 47. It's an oldie, but not as of a goodie, and we're going to get to that. Uh, but at first, we, as you already know, we always start with the magazine, so let's get right into that. I'm going to move the Negvar off to the side. And uh, yeah, this is basically the Klingon's uh, heavy cruiser. There we have a nice animated shot of the Negvar, and at least uh, we can uh, appreciate the magazine uh, with this. This looks really good. I love the color palette on this ship i always talk about the federation ships and having kind of a bland color palette and uh, this one really pops it looks really good and uh, issue number 47 starts with the official starships collection klingon iks negvar negvar class launched in the 24th century it is a length of 682.32 meters and a maximum warp speed of 9.6 and uh yeah you know similarly to the uh Vorcha class uh this is one of those ships and i just want to start out with it that with, with this that um it, it looks totally badass. You know, you expect this ship to, like, you, you expect to start peeing your pants when you see this, see this ship coming on screen. And, man, I can't talk today. But, nevertheless, um, and, you know, this ship really never got a time to shine. It always kind of got its butt kicked. Even the Defiant destroyed a Negvar class in the Mirror Universe. So, uh, you know, it's just kind of unfortunate. Uh, wasted potential, in my opinion. And granted, you know, Star Trek never really followed the Klingons, uh, like, as a main character too, too much. At least not, like, to the extent of following a ship episode after episode. We had some, but uh, it was always the bird of prey that really got the spotlight. Never something like a Negvar. So uh, this is uh, really cool. Of course, we always have our stand instructions. Then we have the ICAST Negvar, Robert O'Reilly on Gowron, designing the ship and on screen. There we have a nice frontal shot of the Negvar. Again, one of those ships that, unless you look at it in 3D, really it really kind of looks totally different. Just looks like this flat kind of attack ship. Uh, Klingon Defense Force, it is a Negvar. It is constructed at Konos, Kronos Orbital Factory Base. 2373 was its launch date, 682.32 meters, a little bit longer than the Enterprise D, I believe. Uh, 2500 crew capacity, just over the Enterprise Ds. And uh, warp 9.6, 20 disruptor cannons, one for disruptor, and four torpedo launchers. Man, you, again, you'd think this ship would have a lot of ships dead to rights, but we never did see that. There we have a nice underbelly shot of the Negvar, looking really good. Klingon Defense Force Negvar, launched in 2372, the ICAS Negvar was hugely powerful in the new flagship of the Klingon Empire. Too bad no episodes ever depicted this. Um... And then, of course, we have some screenshots of the Negvar from Deep Space Nine, Way of the Warrior. Again, there we have a Negvar capital ship and a Vorchow right in front of it. And then, of course, that scene where Gowron said, You have stood against us in battle. This is something the Klingons do not forgive or oh, forget. Even though they did forget it later. And then, of course, we have those awesome uh, orthographic views. We have the top, the bottom, and the front. Again, just a really cool design of a ship. Really awesome to see. And then, of course, we have, I believe, a Vorcha and then a Negvar right here attacking Janeway's shuttle. Uh, we did see this ship all, like, it started in, uh, I believe, late TNG, maybe? And, uh, yeah, I thought we saw it in uh, the final episode of TNG, and then we see it a lot in Deep Space Nine and a little bit in Voyager 2. There we have Chancellor Gowron, those crazy eyes. I love all the Gowron memes that are out these days. More Gowron. And then, of course, we have some drawings of the Negvar, some sketches, some preliminary sketch work. You can see kind of a Vorcha coming out of a Negvar. And then, of course, we have a Negvar. It looks like the uh, studio model. And yes, it is. And it uh, looks like it was damaged by customs and rebuilt with a dark. That's kind of cool. And then, of course, we have more Negvar. And then, of course, we have the final Negvar. And yes, it was first seen in All Good Things. That is interesting. So, uh, yeah, every once in a while, I do read the magazine. And uh, there we have a nice bottom orthographic view of the Negvar. And so let's do our standard stand instructions. And of course, I got my little uh, acrylic base here. And of course, this is typical. Got the little peg, put the peg in. This holds uh, pretty firmly. And then the uh, Negvar is really just a flat thing. And you're just going to kind of put this 
over the pads and it sits just nicely. I've never had any issues of this ship. It's kind of got a upward stance going off into other space. And let's take a look at the Negvar. And uh, straight away, and this model does get a lot of gripes, and rightfully so, straight away, unfortunately, this is just a really uh, kind of straight model uh there's really not anything beyond the pay there, there's two things i do like about this let's start there uh the weight is good this feels uh heavy um i'm not sure if this uh if the wings are steel it feels like they might be uh metal um but this does feel pretty weighty for the size of the ship it is the other thing is the paint palette i do love the paint palette it looks just as extravagant as it does in the magazine photo that is really good again you got some nice yellows across here you got some like um, more magenta maroon color uh you got some nice yellow accents going in some brighter yellow accents you got more maroon back here you got the klingon symbol and the maroon and yellow backing looks really good some more yellow lines um you got the uh nacelle looks like it's got quad nacelles but unfortunately uh no uh transparent plastic which i think is kind of a waste it is painted that magenta color which looks nice enough but i really think some transparent plastic would have helped this model quite a bit um uh but other than that it's just kind of a flat model you're getting up more molded detail painted detail uh no paint or any kind of detailing on the engines uh the impulse engines at all that you can see from the magazine that these were it would be the impulse engines uh, i got lots of nice bright yellows down here and lots of nice uh kind of uh, puke, puke or gold colored outlines around the magenta. That looks really, really good. Again, tons of molded detail going down the uh, boom of the ship. Looking good. Uh, just kind of extruded up, but it really just, just looks kind of, you know, it's like they took this flat base and then built another base on that and another little base on that and another little base on that. And, you know, it's just, it, it just feels very, uh, this feels like one of the more loveless Eagle Moss models. And I, I credit Eagle Moss a lot with putting a, little, a lot of love into these uh, unsung heroes. And unfortunately, this ship, I just can't see it. Uh, you do have some nice gray detail. And of course, it looks like you got their forward. Uh, I think that's, sure that's an antenna ray or disruptor. Uh, but nevertheless, and again, you got the detailing for the bridge up here. Again, it, molded detail seems uh, reasonably plentiful. Um, it's just unfortunate this is such a flat model. You got some little divots um, in between on the uh, pylons right here that extend outward. And then you, of course, have the uh, back area right here and uh, shares a lot in common with the Vorcha class except for this kind of back mohawk thing here and then again you got a very flat back it does have some painted detail though and some gold detail up here if you can see it um and again the nacelles do have some mold detail in there but uh overall you know uh, again just kind of a uh it, it's i don't think it's terrible and there are a lot of uh I, i've seen a lot of comments you know that this this model is is terrible but i do agree that uh this is just one of the uh not as good eagle moss efforts in my opinion so there we go let's do a couple quick comparisons and of there we have it with it's uh Vorcha stable mate uh so you can see that and uh you already know that scaling isn't eagle moss's thing and of course we see it right here let me bring it to the front so you can see both ships much easier and uh the negvars i think supposed to be almost double the length of the Vorcha, and uh here the Vorcha is actually longer uh so there we go let's get a shot at them from the front and uh i just want to kind of come off and say that uh these ships these are two ships that i think really could have benefited from the xl treatment uh, they just, uh, again, you know, the Negvar obviously has its issues, but I really think a bigger model would have done so much more justice to these ships. And after seeing the XL uh, Katinga, um, uh, you know, just seeing what Eagle Moss can do. Uh, so, and then, of course, there we have them from the side, and you can just kind of see how that looks of uh, the Negvar having a bit more depth than the uh, Vord shot class. So there we go. And then, of course, let's see if it uh, can at least try to scale with something else. And uh, no, <laughs> it doesn't. There's the Enterprise D, the standard Enterprise D model. And uh, the Negvar is just, unfortunately, it's smaller than the Enterprise D. So again, I really feel the Negvar got shafted on uh, size-wise 
from Eagle Moss. So um, uh, I do feel like this model uh, not only should get an XL, but it should have got a bigger standard model. But I digress. And that train is locked at sales. There it is from the side uh, for your comparison. And there we go. So let's summarize. And there we have it for the Eagle Moss official Star Trek Starships collection, issue number 47, the Negvar. And yeah, uh, I you know why I always credit Eagle Moss. I'll say it again. I credit them with showing some love to the lesser scene or unsug heroes or the ships that were only seen for a few minutes or had a few scenes. And unfortunately, it's unfortunate to say that the Negvar, which is uh, one of my favorite Klingon ships, just didn't get that level of love. It just suffers from being a mostly flat model. Um, it would have done better with some transparent plastic. Um, uh, and yeah, it's just not, doesn't feel as grand as I expected Negvar to be. Definitely down on size as well. Uh, on the plus side, it does have some great paint. It's got a great weight to it, so I do love that very much. It is very well built. It does sit in its stand very well. Um, so again, if you're a fan of Klingon ships and you do like this ship like myself and you just want something to kind of represent the ship itself, um, yeah, then definitely go out and get this model. I wouldn't overpay for it as, again, it is not Eagle Moss's finest hour. And of course, you could check out Master Replicas to that. I'll put a link to the description down below. I'll put a link in the description to the actual ship if I find it in Master Replica's collection. But of course, check them out anyway and get registered if you are not to get in on those drops for new ships, which we hopefully will have more coming very soon. And that being said, that is going to conclude this review. If you found this review fun and informative, consider subscribing to my channel. I do Eagle Moss. It's going to get a little far and few as I get some new models in, but we will keep doing them because I certainly have people that enjoy them and I am happy that you do. That being said, thank you so much to those of you who are already subscribed give this video a like if you've also found it fun and informative also check out my tiktok i do do short tiktok videos uh on there uh for just kind of get advertising out for this channel and that being said i have been fc finch thank you so much for watching Copla!